Welcome to the NWI.com Political Roundtable for Thursday, January 9th. I'm Robert Blaskwitz, Assistant Managing Editor of The Times. Join with me today, Doug Ross, Editorial Page Editor of The Times, and Assistant Managing Editor, Krista Zivanovic. Uh, we've been off for a couple weeks due to um, illness and weather, and so it's good to be back. Uh, it's certainly a busy week to be back with the, uh, with the uh, state legislature uh, beginning their session uh, on Tuesday. Uh, plenty to talk about there. First and foremost in a lot of people's minds is the gay marriage uh, uh, amendment uh, to the state constitution uh, banning gay marriage. Uh, looks like they will uh, move to try to bring that to a vote. Yes. Uh, so Krista, what, what, is, uh, what, what does it say? I'll try and give you the Reader's Digest version. You can read online later and in print tomorrow Dan Cardin's fuller version. But House Bill 1153 um, is now been proposed, uh, and uh, we voters will vote on it this November if it does indeed pass the House and Senate. And the, meaning that we'd vote on the amendment. We'd vote on right. the amendment and right. whether to include right. it in our state constitution. Even though state law, let me remind you, already prohibits a marriage between any but a man and a woman, but this would make an amendment to our state constitution. And I found it interesting that I, I printed out the actual language of it because it was kind of intriguing. The one se there's two sentences. The first one, okay, only a marriage between one man and one woman shall be valid or recognized as a marriage in Indiana. But a second sentence adds, a legal status identical or substantially similar to that of marriage for unmarried individuals shall not be valid or recognized. So we're thinking that means no civil union, even mm -hmm. between a man and a woman. You're either married or you're not, as Doug mm -hmm. Ross put it. But what's interesting is there is an entire page of exceptions. So it seems like the, um, at least the House Republicans, uh, want to have it both ways because they have some uh, things that they say this amendment will not prohibit extending employment benefits by private sector employees, political subdivisions, which I mean to mean state universities and others, um, or state educational institutions to any beneficiary designated by an employed individual. And there are a lot of paragraphs here going that route so that it sounds like if Indiana University or Cummins or ArcelorMittal wanted to allow an employee who was a homosexual to designate someone as a beneficiary for insurance mm -hmm. or other purposes, they could do it. So it sounds to me like the state is trying to have it both ways. Well, well this, not only, yeah. uh, um, this could be somebody who doesn't want to make the big commitment to marry, but is you know a man and a woman living together, and uh, uh, they just don't want to make that commitment, well, but they do want the legal benefits. Well, well, maybe it's also trying to protect this from legal challenge, because now that gay marriage is legal in a number of growing number of states, you'll have people who possibly got married in another state same-sex couple moved to Indiana, well, would they still retain that power of attorney and the right to visit a loved one in the hospital and things like that? So maybe that's, you know, that, that would certainly be something where the Indiana's law could be challenged, uh, could be more susceptible to challenge. And the other question that Dan and I had, and Doug later when we talked about it, this is just a law. This language is just talking about their legislative intent. This language will not be in the Constitution. Just the two-sentence amendment will. Mm -hmm. So does that amendment trump the legislative intent? Because oh. really, legislative <laughs> intent is just legislative intent. It's not yeah. a law. So it's really confusing and kind of... Well, the, 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 <laughs> here's where this questions. would come into play. The Supreme Court is, you know, absolutely, if, assuming this is put into the Constitution, the Supreme Court, you know, Indiana first and probably U.S., I'm guessing, is going to look at this if it's not even ruled unconstitutional before then. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, one of the things they will look at is, is it constitutional? Is it unconstitutional? You know, how do we interpret this? What's the legislative intent? This uh, and they provide the legislative House intent. Bill 1153 is the legislative right. intent. So, right. you know, this is, you know, Basically, they're planning for the loss mm -hmm. is yeah. what it looks like. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. So uh, it'll be pretty interesting. Uh, I know that uh, um, we're, we're looking at this, and, and people are seeing this as, as the amendment is, you know, 
a Christian thing, but you have to look at there are a lot of denominations that, particularly Protestant, uh, that are um, really opposed to this as well. So uh, it's it's pretty interesting to see. You know, this is you know don't see it as Christian or anti-Christian. See it as conservative Christian or you know. Um, everybody else. And the next step, even if this passes, obviously, is then it's the campaign for November, and you'll right. see both sides ratchet right. up. Well, um, and, and that's where I'm thinking this is going to be a big deal. Look, look it at will the, certainly boost the turnout for a November election. Well, and, and it will boost it for the Republicans, but it'll especially boost it, I think, that'll have an, um, um, you know, look at the Republicans generally have really good turnout anyway, especially this is the off year. So, you know, um, um, mm -hmm. this is the uh, uh, congressional election. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, the midterm uh, deal. So I think you might see a lot of single issue voters coming mm -hmm. out and they're going to see this as a Republican initiative and they're going to vote Democratic on other races, not just this, and so I think it might have some other implications on the ballot. Yeah, but back in 2004 you saw all those gay marriage uh, ballot initiatives put on there to try to boost uh, George W. Bush's re-election chance, chances. The, the, the shifting uh, landscape has, has really changed that up, and I'm not sure we're going to see far, yeah. far different outcome. Yeah, I think so. Because polling has shown that even mm -hmm. Republicans necessarily right. don't support adding this right. to the Constitution. Yeah, they, they might support the law that already exists, but right. not the amendment. To put it into the Constitution. Right. The other major issue going on down at the State House right now is on taxes and the governor's uh, plan uh, to, to cut corporate uh, uh, property taxes. Uh, that's been switched up a bit by the GOP leadership. Uh, down in the state house, Krista, what's going on with that? Yes, they don't seem to uh, care that much about that as an issue. Uh, what I think that they have introduced today or are talking about introducing is uh, a bill that would reduce taxes on business property uh, income, not by one billion as originally thought, but by thirty million statewide. So I'm not sure how that would affect Lake Porter or Laporte counties, but something new. Uh, to the mix is they want to cut the corporate income tax. Um, they already cut it to eight and a half from seven, uh, and it will go down to 6.5 percent by 2015. Well, now they want to take it from 6.5 percent to 4.9 percent by 2019. And I did a little calculation. We pay, individuals pay 3.4 percent income tax, and in Lake County, 1.5 percent, and in Porter County, 0.5 percent. So it's anywhere between uh, 4 to 4.9 percent for all of us in the region. And by 2019, corporations would be paying the same amount of income tax. However, because their rate will go down, we might end up having to pay more local option income tax to still cover our services and our schools. So once again, I've been harping on this for months. The tax shell game continues. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, something they could do is they could say, you know, well, you know, we want to cut the corporate income tax rate, but and we've got the personal income tax rate, but we could extend the county income tax rate to include corporations and not just individuals. Won't happen. It won't happen. But but it would be interesting mm -hmm. to see who proposes that. Yeah. You know, sooner or later you're going to have to say how much money do we really need to fund government and who's going to pay for it? And they're not really talking about. And that. really, you know, I would like to see some statistics, and we've talked about this before. Um, trying to lure companies here with lower and lower and lower taxes. But at what point, as Roberts pointed out many times, does it become a zero-sum game? At what point does mm -hmm. do our schools and parks and everything suffer so much that companies look and say, well, the quality yeah. of life is not so great. Why would we want to If, if you have crumbling highways, there? why would a uh, company want to locate here, right. no matter what the tax rate is? Right. Right. So, and, right. and, you know, every every business executive is going to drive whether they have kids or not so the road condition is going to be the first very first impression they have in yeah. indiana um right. you know, quite frankly the roads aren't right. in good shape and as if anyone who read sunday's paper you hope they're not going down klein avenue <laughs> right well or you know us 30 in valpo yeah. uh, you know the trucks are concentrated into one lane and that right lane takes a huge mm -hmm. beating there 
you know, potholes that, you know, right. I almost got stopped for uh, 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 drunken driving, I'm sure, because I'm trying <laughs> to avoid the yeah. potholes. So, yeah. you know, the cop uh, saw what, how I was driving, why I was driving, mm -hmm. and then he was driving on the right side of the lane, uh, same as I mm -hmm. was. It's funny. Right. The other interesting development uh, this week, uh, today really, uh, is uh, the announcement uh, by uh, State Senator Sue Lansky that she will not be seeking another term in office this year. She's, of course, been battling cancer and uh, her health uh, health has right. deterred her from another term in office. Um, it, and filings began uh, yesterday in Lake and Porter County, so candidates began to throw their hats in the ring, so I assume people will start looking at her seat. And, right. And, and and you know you hate to you hate to run against somebody who's got cancer because then you look like you know you're you're a, a heartless vulture or mm -hmm. something. But now that she has done the right thing uh, and you know announced right away, hey, my job's up for grabs. Go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it just, what I thought was interesting about this was the timing of it. She announced it on the first day that filing started. You know, contrast that with Evan Bai, who announced uh, a few years ago on the last day, you know, when, when nobody had a chance, basically, to right. file, um, that he wasn't going to seek re-election. I think Lansky, you know, being on the, uh, uh, you know, in, in the Indiana Senate, she was, you know, really heavily involved in legislation involving elections in particular, so I think she was very sensitive mm -hmm. to that time. Right, right. When Bai... Uh, Drew, withdrew from the race, uh, there was no chance for anyone to enter the primary, so they actually, the Democrats had a caucus uh, right. to, to place a nominee. And then, then that candidate had a slow start and lost the, uh, yeah. right. lost in the fall. To Dan Coates. Right. right. So, so, uh, so this will be interesting to see, mm -hmm. you know, what happens in South County. I think probably, uh, you know, there will be some issues related to the Iliana Expressway. You know, mm -hmm. there's a uh, some other environmental issues mm -hmm. down there uh, that'll happen that are specific to that district as well as you know the overall here's what's happening mm -hmm. in Indiana uh, issues so it will be interesting to see who oh. files and and what their uh, you know district issues are we'll keep an eye on that and yeah. we'll be updating uh, every day filings new filings in the uh, in the times you can watch for that and as, as the election draws closer we'll have a course full coverage for you so right. and state house is in session and so look look to us Absolutely. online and in print. Dan Cardin is down there running around. Trying we are to, one of the uh, few papers in, yes, in Indiana are. that still has a full-time state house reporter. So And we have a very um, good one. Yeah, exactly. Very hardworking. So, yes, be sure to watch all our coverage. And uh, please uh, join us next week for another Political Roundtable.